Imagine setting out on months-long sea journeys with no refrigeration, no cheap salt, and no stable source of fresh food. Yet Viking crews did exactly that. Their warriors sailed across brutal northern waters, raided distant coasts, and built new settlements, all while carrying enough provisions to keep entire crews fed. Their success wasn't only due to their ships or weapons. It relied just as much on a surprisingly advanced food preservation system. And here's the twist. The preservation methods that allowed Viking society to thrive were not centered around salt at all. Salt, in early medieval Scandinavia, was incredibly costly, nearly as valuable as silver. It had to be produced through slow evaporation of seawater, which made it far too precious to rely on for feeding armies or stocking ships. Instead of depending on imported salt, northern communities leaned into the forces of nature itself. They made use of the tools their environment provided in abundance. Relentless cold, steady winds, sour dairy byproducts, and the smoke of their wood fires. These simple, natural elements became the backbone of a food system durable enough to support exploration, war, and trade. Viking preservation wasn't based on a single trick. It was an interconnected web of techniques. Each method had its own season, its own ideal products, and its own strengths. Together, they formed a resilient structure that could withstand harsh winters, shortages, or failed harvests. Being able to store food meant being able to travel, to survive, and to fight. Food preservation wasn't a household chore. It was strategic. In this rewritten look at Viking food technology, we'll skip the idea of medieval barrels filled with salt and instead explore the ingenious alternative Scandinavians relied on. You'll see how cold air could turn fish into something as hard as timber, how fermented dairy could replace brine, and how smoke acted as both a preservative and a flavor enhancer. These methods weren't just clever. They were essential for the expansion of Norse culture. Wind drying. Nature's freeze dryer. One of the most important techniques used by Viking communities was simple but remarkably effective. Open air drying. In the cold northern climate, winter and early spring offered the perfect conditions, low temperatures and dry, circulating air. Using massive wooden racks called hjel, built in extremely windy locations such as exposed coastlines and fjord edges, they hung fish caught during winter. The fish were cleaned, paired by their tails, and draped over the poles. Thousands of fish might hang from a single structure, slowly losing moisture day after day. Because the air stayed just above freezing, the fish didn't rot before they dried. No flames, no fuel, no added ingredients, just climate knowledge and patience. Within months, the fish became stockfish, lightweight, rock hard, and nutritionally dense. This food could last for years and was perfect for sea expeditions. Meat was preserved in a similar way. Thin strips were hung in shaded areas or beneath simple covers where the airflow remained strong. The result, known later as dried meat or skerpikut, served as an emergency supply for harsh winters or military campaigns. Production wasn't small-scale, either. Archaeology and written accounts describe entire communities turning coastal landscapes into hubs of fish-drying activity. Stockfish became a major export, traded across Europe for grains, fine cloth, and metals. Drying worked wonderfully, as long as the weather cooperated. But what did they do when the air was too humid? Acid preservation turning dairy waste into a shield against spoilage. When the weather grew too damp for drying, Vikings relied on a completely different strategy, one rooted in their dairy-heavy way of life. Scandinavian farms produced abundant milk, which was transformed into butter, cheese, 
and a thick, cultured product similar to modern skier. What remained after these processes was whey, a sharp, acidic liquid. Most people today would discard it. Vikings discovered its power. Lactic acid in whey created an environment hostile to spoilage microbes. By sheer observation and tradition, Norse farmers learned that this tangy byproduct acted like a natural preservative. Over generations, they developed a technique that let them store meat even during warm, wet seasons when drying was impossible. Chunks of meat or fish were placed tightly in wooden barrels, sometimes after a brief boiling. These barrels were then filled completely with sour whey, sealed carefully, and stored in cool areas, often underground or in semi-buried cellars. Ensuring an airtight seal was crucial. Any leak could ruin the batch. But when done correctly, the results lasted months. The meat became tender and carried a distinct acidic flavor. Though unusual to modern tastes, it was a reliable source of protein and fat. In Iceland, this method is still remembered under the name sur, a practice once essential to surviving long winters. This technique was remarkably efficient. No salt required, no smoke or fire needed, no cold climate necessary. Fully waste-free, using what dairy farms already produced in abundance. It was preservation powered by bacteria, the good kind, long before microbiology existed. Smoke, weaponizing fire without flame. When the climate didn't allow drying and whey barrels weren't enough, Vikings turned to smoke, not simply for flavor, but for its preservative properties. They used two approaches, hot smoking. This was essentially cooking. Food was held close to a fire, absorbing smoke while being heated. The result tasted good, but didn't keep long. It was meant for quick consumption. Cold smoking. Cold smoking was where Viking ingenuity shone. Food was placed in small huts, pits, or enclosed spaces, while a smoldering fire burned at a distance, producing thick, cool smoke. The temperature stayed low, just warm enough to dry but not cook the meat or fish. This slow infusion could last weeks. During that time, the smoke deposited natural chemicals, phenols and aldehydes, that inhibited bacteria and sealed the food in a protective aromatic coating. As moisture evaporated, the product became compact, durable, and deeply flavored. Different woods produced different flavors. Alder, beech, and juniper were favorites, each giving its own character to the food. Viking smokers essentially became early connoisseurs of barbecue science. Cold-smoked foods could last months and were highly valued on voyages. Unlike dried stockfish, smoked foods didn't require elaborate rehydration. They could be eaten relatively quickly after warming or boiling. When nature became the pantry, using earth, ice, and bogs. Some foods, especially fatty ones like butter, didn't respond well to drying or smoking. For these, Vikings used methods that seem bizarre today, but were incredibly effective. Underground freezing. In northern regions, parts of the ground stayed frozen for most of the year. Vikings dug deep pits or cellars into this permafrost, creating natural refrigerators. Meat, fish, and dairy stored in these spaces could last for months with no additional treatment. Excavations of Viking settlements frequently reveal these underground storage chambers, essential survival tools for communities facing long, dark winters. Bog storage, the natural vacuum seal. Peat bogs, with their cold, oxygen-poor, acidic conditions, acted like enormous preservation tanks. After sealing butter in wooden containers, Vikings submerged them in bogs, where the contents remained edible for astonishing lengths of time. 
sometimes decades. Modern archaeologists occasionally uncover these bog butter barrels, their contents still recognizable. While the flavor would be challenging to a modern palate, it demonstrates how well the method worked. There is also evidence suggesting meat may have been preserved this way as well, wrapped or sealed before being submerged. Without oxygen, spoilage bacteria simply couldn't thrive. To a people without modern refrigeration, the land itself became a preservation tool. Fermentation, taken to the extreme, the case of the toxic shark. Among the most dramatic preservation techniques of the Norse world was one born from desperation and insight, transforming poisonous Greenland shark meat into edible food. Fresh shark meat is loaded with toxic compounds like urea and TMAO. Eating it can be dangerous, even lethal. But on isolated North Atlantic islands such as Iceland, wasting a massive source of protein was unthinkable. So the Vikings devised a way to neutralize it. The method was long, slow, and intense. 1. Florian shark was cut into large chunks and placed in shallow pits near the shore. 2. Stones were stacked on top, pressing liquid toxins out of the flesh as it fermented. 3. Over weeks or months, biochemical changes transformed the meat, reducing its toxicity. 4. After fermentation, the pieces were hung outdoors on wooden racks to air dry for additional months. 5. By the end, the meat became a dense, pungent, ammonia-scented food that could last for long periods. This is the ancestor of modern Icelandic hakarl. While often treated as a tourist challenge today, it was once a lifesaver, a high-protein reserve that allowed Icelandic communities to endure winters that offered little else, storing food in Viking homes and ships. Producing preserved food was only half of the struggle. Keeping it safe from moisture, animals, and time was equally vital. On land, wealthier households built elevated barns known as stabur on wooden stilts. By lifting the structure off the ground and smoothing or reinforcing the posts, they made it nearly impossible for rodents to reach the supplies. Inside these buildings, sacks of grain, bundles of dried fish, and rings of smoked meat were kept airy and dry. Cellars beneath houses offered cool, stable temperatures. Fermented products, including whey-preserved meats, sour milk preparations, and ale, were stored here in sealed barrels. Items that needed airflow, like stockfish or smoked cuts, were hung under rafters or in attic lofts, high above damp ground. At sea, on long voyages, only the most durable foods were chosen. Storage on ships had to withstand constant movement, salt spray, and unpredictable weather. Viking cooperage, barrel making, was exceptionally advanced. Barrels needed to be watertight and strong enough to survive rolling seas. These containers held ride meats, stockfish, utter, salted, clarified, or buried in bog style before departure, whey preserved foods, cheese wheels, ale, and water. Every warrior likely kept some personal rations, while additional supplies were managed communally in the ship's central storage area. What Vikings actually ate on long voyages. Aboard a longship crossing the North Atlantic, the diet might have included stall stockfish, lightweight, long-lasting, nearly pure protein, ride or smoked meat, often eaten as is or boiled when possible, brate stored in acidic way, high in fat and protein, hard cheese, compact, calorie-dense, slow to spoil, butt ale or clarified fats, used to enrich porridge or add energy, 
forcements, and rye or barley crackers, durable sources of carbohydrates, dried beans or peas, cooked in a communal pot during calm weather, poloshki or beer, more reliable than water thanks to mild alcohol and hops. It wasn't glamorous cuisine, but it fueled rowing crews for weeks. Winter survival. How preserved foods carried communities through the dark months. Once the final harvest was gathered and the slaughtering season ended, Viking families faced the long, resource-scarce winter. Fresh food would become rare, and hunting was unreliable. Survival depended on how well they had prepared during the brighter months. A well-stocked household might rely on barangrels of salted or whey-preserved meat, racks of dried fish and smoked cuts, Google vegetables stored in cool, buried pits, fermented dairy like skier, buttermilk, sour whey, and aged cheese, grain stores turned into porridge, flatbread, and ale. Disberries kept in their own juices, honey, or whey. At reserves, tallow, lard, butter, and bog-aged bog butter. These stores didn't just keep people alive. They shaped the flavor of Viking cuisine, which leaned heavily toward acidic, fermented, smoky, and salty tastes using fermentation and preservation for more than food. Preservation wasn't limited to feeding families. It supported every part of Norse life. Dried cod, stockfish, became one of the region's most valuable exports. Pfizer, exploration. Long-lasting food allowed Viking crews to sail enormous distances, from the Black Sea to North America. Ardsfair. Armies could move farther and faster when carrying durable rations. Community rituals, fermented drinks, ale, mead, and later beer, were essential at feasts, weddings, and funerals. In many ways, Scandinavia's harsh climate pushed the Norse to become masters of food technology centuries ahead of others. The Legacy of Viking Preservation Today some techniques developed in the Viking Age survive almost unchanged. Clakeland still makes hawkarl from fermented shark. Norway's iconic stockfish remains a major export. Ferment and dairy traditions like skier continue across the Nordics. Moked lamb, cured fish, and sour whey marinades endure in regional cuisines. These practices aren't just culinary quirks. They're a direct line back to a world where food meant survival, ingenuity, and community resilience.